No sign of high angle scattering, and so this is a relatively poorly ordered framework. And that corresponds with this silicon NMR, where you have a very broad distribution of sites, which again reflects a glass-like environment. So this is an amorphous or disordered-like framework, and it has some loose structural ordering. After eight days, though, things are starting to happen. And guess what? It's transforming to a lamellar phase. We can see that at the small angle. You also see the appearance excuse me, of high angle scattering, which basically continues as you go to 12 days. Lamellar phase, and now you see evidence of crystalline ZSM5. And so when you look at the x-ray, you see, oh, excuse me, electron micrograph, you see now this has transformed into layered structures. And when you look at the TEM of the final product, you see these nice layered sheets where you have, it's still lamellar, but now it has crystal interfaces between them that are of the crystalline ZSM5. When you look at the NMR, you see again, like I showed previously, the amorphous framework has transformed to a material with five sites, which goes on to transform to a crystalline material. And the ZSM5 is a very complicated structure with 24 overlapping Q4 sites. So this is a bit misleading. The crystalline sites here simply are, are very complicated because there's many, many more sites than, and they're very close to space, and they're, and they're not resolved. They're small, and so these Q3 sites out here are the ones that are on the surface of what you see. So what's happening is this is going from a disordered framework to an, a, lay, a, a layered structure onto a zeolite material that we can use then X-ray to establish, and the NMR will come back to. What what's, will be fascinating is that we have five sites. We don't have the same surfactant. These were different conditions, yet this and I'm going to show you, are in the same location and have the same structure as the layered silicate that I started with, which is a surprise. So the, so the question is, how do, we, how do these mesostructured zeolites develop? And the hypothesis then is that we've, I think, shown you we have some reason to indicate that the amorphous mesostructured materials that we start, that is these guys, mesostructured frameworks, transform into 3D porous crystalline structures, and they do into like these zeolite type frames, but they do so <clears throat> through a, a layered silicate intermediate. And I'll show you the layered silicate intermediate corresponds to the same layered silicate intermediate that I talked about, that I showed in, in the, in the, in the, as an example. And to convince you of that, I show here Here's the material that I just discussed. The one, there's five peaks after eight days. And here's the same spectrum that I, that's taken from the, two, the, the first the paper in 2001, which is the one I'm gonna, I, we, just, we just had this published in JAX uh, last month, which outlines the structure of this framework. And this material, if you look at the, the signals, they line up exactly underneath the peaks of these guys. Okay? Now, these are more ordered. This is a little bit broader. Silicon NMR one-dimensional, you can't be completely sure because it could be ambiguous. All this says is that the electron density around, there's five different colored coordinated sites. There's one, two, three, four, and five, and they're interlinked together. That these five sites are all distinct chemically and structurally, and, and these suggest that this could be the same. And maybe that's not so surprising if we look at it because material that we used in our layered silicate from this material have a quaternary ammonium, an ethyl group, and a C14. Ah, obrigado. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and if we look at the material that the re Korean group showed, they have a longer chain, C20, but they have methyl groups, same as this, and they have propyl. Uh, actually, a hexyl group here, to be precise. It's a, it's a C6 link. And they have two of them. So, in fact, 
after we made these measurements, we thought, well, perhaps this is not, this is what we should have expected if we were careful, that these, the molecular structures of the point that's interacting with the surfactant looks very similar. And therefore, it's, in fact, not surprising that we would get similar type structures which are interacting with this quaternary ammonium. By the way, this is positive charge at pH 10 or 11, where these are synthesized, this is negative, so there's a strong electrostatic interaction, which is when zeolites are synthesized. Okay, so the amorphous framework transforms to the layered silicate, and it looks like it's the same materials, and this is quite accidental. I think this is really complete serendipity but that we, we happen to see this. And in fact, when we had first done the NMR work, we said, you know, this looked very similar, and that, that really helped us make this additional sort of uh, conclusion. Also consistent with that is the X-ray diffraction, uh, diffraction reflections of these axes also match those of the layered silicate. So the layered silicate has these reflections that are important at 0.85 and 0.68 nanometers. And we see those also in the X-ray diffraction of the intermediate layered silicate. We also see those out here, but these are from some of the crystallization has gone further to for, start forming ZSM5, but, but we have the layered silicate materials here, which are due to the five peaks you see here. And in fact, this higher reflections here, if you're paying, if you're really interested, I'm, is due to the fact that this is the representation of the crystallization of ZSM5. That's, so it's partly continuing. We haven't stopped it at only the layered silicate. It's a mixture of structures. So, Here's where now some really powerful two-dimensional methods come in. And this is one of the things that I would strongly encourage you with the availability of like Tiago and others who are experts in, um, in, in NMR can, can now combine perhaps with some of the solid state materials aspects that you guys might have interest in here. So we're now using uh, pro silicon and we now can look at protons and we're using these dipole couplings in order to transfer magnetization from the proton that we initially excite to silicon, which we want to measure. And the way we do that is we do a, have a proton excitation. The, we don't excite the silicon at all. We then allow a cross-polarization using these dipole couplings to transfer the magnetization from hydrogen to nearby silicon atoms, and then we detect the silicon under proton decoupling. We do this in a series of incremented evolution times so that we discreetly acquire and indirectly the proton signals so that we can establish what the proton signals here are. So by, we can obtain a, this is a magic angle spinning, but we get a pr experiment in a proton dimension which corresponds to the proton signals from our surfactant. In the, we detect the silicon and then we have, that's how we get this signal. So what you get then is a two-dimensional frequency map which then, in a two-dimensional spectrum, allows you to correlate the silicon-29 signals with the specific hydrogen moieties from which they receive their magnetization. And this is the power of the 2D methods for why they're used in polymer science and protein structure determination and inorganic structures, because the ability to do this correlatively with the dipole couplings or J-couplings or whatever allow you to then correlate these signals in a way that is very unambiguous. So, for example, and I'll show you the guess again, is that we find that these five different silicon uh, sites are all coupled to the surfactant head group, which is what these signals here, as well as some water that's absorbed on the surface, as well as some hydroxyl groups which are associated with near the, the OH groups. So you correlate the proton spectrum in this dimension, which is the proton signals, with the silicon 29 in a two-dimensional frequency map. And I'll say more about this here. So for example, in the proton spectrum, this is the exact same spectrum, but just with a little bit more emphasis on the molecular chemistry. So A, B correspond to the moieties I show at the head group. These are hydrogen atoms which are bonded to carbons adjacent to the, the quaternary ammonium nitrogen. The, the B are the alkyl groups that are, are, have a different signal, and these are embedded near the alkyl signal here but which actually are different from the ones that I show here. The C and D correspond to the alkyl chains. There are many more of them, and the D is the end group of the alkyl group. And what you see is that in the green, you see that all five of these, as I mentioned earlier, are correlated with those signals which match up. So site one is correlated and 
B and with A. And same with all of them. They're all correlated with the same protons that are attached to the quaternary ammonium groups, consistent with them being and strongly interacting with the layered silicate sites of, the, of these silicate nanosheets. So that the, all five layered silicate sites interact strongly with the quaternary ammonium groups and the C6 chains. Notice, however, that they are not strongly interacting. The centers of these distributions are not at the maximum of the C. It's indicating that it's, these are the small, small differences in the molecular environment of these species compared to the alkyl chains. Now, look at this. This is the same spectrum, but now, I'm, now with this species. So now, this is the ZSM5. This is this crystallizing structure. And those also are the ones that are strongly interacting with these head groups and not the others. So this is, this is a sign that you've got this ZSL, zeolite structure which is being templated and directed by these different structure directing groups in this surfactant in a very unambiguous molecular way. Now, at this point, so the crystallizing framework sites also interact with these, and it suggests that these layered silicate sites are being then somehow bridged as the structure then, as these layers come together to form a larger structure which develops into a zeolite. To prove that point, we can now do this, a similar experiment, but now looking at silicon-silicon double quantum measurements. And what these are, these are using dipole couplings to look at, for example, now how these sites are, are interacting. Now, this is one that's gone a little bit farther. We've, we've captured it at 10 days. And what this is, is this is the single quantum spectrum, which is now has larger region of crystallization, the same, same five sites, but now they're lower because this, the layered silicate has been consumed to form the crystalline zeolite. So these are these, these large overlapping sites from the 24 silicate sites of the zeolite. But I'm going to call your attention to this, that you have now the opportunity to see from the silicon correlation that site one here is correlated with site two, with site three, with site four, and with site five. So all of these different correlations are consistent with the framework structure that I've outlined in this molecular building unit. Similarly, and so on, so you, can, you can do it in reverse. So you can find, you can then use all of these things to establish that the interconnectivity of these allows you to establish exactly which of these sites are, are interacting strongly and near in proximity to each other. And so this allows one then to identify the structure and how these sites are interacting with each other to form the, form the, the framework that we then continue to transform. If we now look at the next one, and this is the, the sort of the proof that the layered silicate transforms, this is the, the silicate sites. Well, I'm gonna, let me follow this one here. So this, these are sites one and sites two. And I've just drawn a couple of them here. Site one, if we follow this correlation down to this one, this is right in the middle, unambiguously, of the crystallizing structure. It's not the layered site five, not site four, and this one follows right down here, and so that, this is essentially the smoking gun, the, the evidence that layered, that the site one is in the process of forming a bond that will eventually be found as crystalline ZSM5. Similarly, this site two is correlated with another region that is unambiguously due to in the crystallization, uh, crystalline region of the ZSM5, and all these others also which are lit in red, showing that these five sites all are in the process of transforming to the crystalline zeolite. And if we look at the, MF, the, the electron micrograph, you can see that these intermediate layer structures are now coming together to form as they, in an intermediate region, which ultimately leads to these multi-layered structures, which are these zeolite man nanosheets. And I think this has really never been seen before. And it's never been appreciated that these ZSM5 crystallizes through these layered silicate intermediates. So being able to do the synthesis together with the NMR turned out to be really enabling for this.